Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of what I believe was the best World Cup final ever. Now best because of all the drama for sure. Uh, I think and especially over time it was so wild and there were so many emotions to be honest after the game I was actually found myself lost lost for you know I didn't have really the due to circumstance it was kind of late you know the, uh, we were watching as a family together family uh, <laughs> my women <laughs> basically lived all the uh, emotions for me as well but there was not I had didn't have the um, thing to come down where I usually like I, I make myself my own opinion but I very often like to hear someone else's as well and I didn't hear any analysis I couldn't, I mean, I the one podcast, the ESPN FC Live that I know comes in, it didn't load and I was finding myself lost. I jotted a few things down. I made relatively late this video, the one minute video where I just say, uh, you know, it was incoherent rule. Uh, so yeah, I took a walk this morning, clear my head. Um, and I think I'm ready to talk about and absolutely outstanding incredible final this was one hell of a ride and i in my head and if you ask my wife she, i throughout the final i rattled off incredible statistics one after another where she said you're an absolute maniac yes i am uh that it had to be all put in perspective. Just to give you a few tidbits <laughs> of the craziness, you know, best final. I think uh, in my lifetime as a watching football fan, the first football game I watched also was the 86 final. I don't remember much of it. I uh, was nine years old, you know, uh, don't. But seeing Harlots and so it was incredible. It There was a similar thread in this final. Argentina having a comfy tunnel lead, throwing it away, but then a moment of magic. I was a little bit there as well. At the beginning, it was very much like the 98 final, where uh, France didn't look right. Like Brazil did in 98. Uh, where I thought, hmm, this has this flavor of the 99, 98 final. Uh, and then France come back, then it goes to overtime. Then it, it, the overtime, while it didn't have the goals, was very much like the Italy-Germany uh, game in 1970. It was up and down, and when you thought it's over, it's not, it continues and so on. And in the very end, I honestly have to say, penalties seemed anti anticlimactic, which is so weird to say. But going back to incredible statistics that I, you know, just going through the finals, I realized that since including the 2002 final, so the 98 final was the last final that was not won from where the TV perspective had the team that played in the first half to the right goal was not winning. <laughs> it's that crazy. I went mentally through it. But I think every other final, 2002, that in the TV, the team that played in the first half towards the right goal has always won since 98. Just think about it. <laughs> That's how deep we are going with that one. Um, never have two teams scored three goals, both teams scored three goals in a final. That has not happened before. Two six goal finals in a row. But this one was competitive. Although for a long stretch it was actually not. The one thing that I have to say, but this is really hard now to actually compare. Uh, what made this final great is the great France com comeback. But uh, for 65, 70 minutes, it looked like a walk in the park for Argentina. And I think in the end, full disclosure, I was a tad bit more on the French side. I think my whole family, we were all uh, more for France in this one. So, um, but full disclosure, uh, I think the final found the right winner because overall the better team were Argentina. Now, how this ranks Argentina among the all-time World Cup winners, this is something that we probably have to discuss. I don't want to discuss this in this video. I don't think this was the greatest Argentina side ever. However, we got the fairy tale ending that like everyone, most neutrals, every Argentinian and so on wanted to see. Uh, so yeah, there you go. And I think what's for me the most amazing thing about this final, when I put up the um, thumbnail for my finals preview, 
I was putting Messi and Mbappé on there and I thought, nah, let's not do that. But I said, nah, you know, get a few, few more views if you put those two up there. The file will not be about them. It was all about them. It was the superstars going at it. And that is what made this final to the next. Okay, I think it is time that we go at least a little bit to the um, uh, game. I don't want to do like this full imagery because I'm surely forgetting some of the details. But just the high points that I want to uh, say. From the beginning, France seemed off. And I heard in the build-up to all the final that Deschamps was actually considering not starting Giroud, but having actually Marcus Thuram in there. Uh, but then in the, in the end, we got the lineup for France that everyone kind of expected. However, from the beginning, the big surprise in the lineup was that Di Maria was playing. And while initially I thought, hmm, is this not a big gamble? Um, I actually think this worked out brilliantly because Di Maria made the difference for most of the game and uh, and i still maintain if di maria would have played the 2014 world cup final argentina would have won that final di maria is that difference maker i think messi uh, would not win a world cup without di maria in there he's that important he is the other guy he literally is the other guy uh the other sparkle and he is a very um unselfish player which is just wonderful to see to the point where I actually think I should probably, uh, you know, crown one of my Argentina judges by putting a Di Maria um, name set. I, sometimes I yelled at him, but he was always a great player. And it was really the difference. France looked, was it nervous? Was it shaking? There was um, seemingly a virus going through uh, the French squad. I was not sure what was happening, but France did not look right. And... Di Maria going, uh, you know, you had the side with Dembele and Koundé, uh, they, were comp they were completely outmatched. And also Theo Hernandez could never get running together with uh, Kylian Mbappé because uh, they also, he, he was caught out in defense and uh, France could not get anything going. They did not look right. Argentina completely dominated them. Tactically, they outplayed them. And then comes the penalty, uh, which at first, you know, uh, why is Dembele so naive in there? I mean, uh, the frustration me uh, meter on him is super, super high, always. Um, but also, at first, I thought this is a nothing penalty. You know, first you see it, okay, penalty, then you see in the replay, there's, there's a nothing penalty. But, you know, when they saw, okay, it is, it, it's a penalty, Messi slots it home. Celebrations were funny because the way he, he's lying down is like, please don't hurt me, please don't hurt me, but come all over me. In a, in, in a way. And then we thought the crowning achievement of this entire tournament, it looked for most of us a second goal for Argentina, which was an absolutely brilliant team. I think six to seven players of the Argentina squad uh, played the ball. I think the the best pass, of course, came from Messi, which was only the second or third to I think it was the second to last pass of that entire, that entire move. But the way he opens it up and the ball goes to McAllister, crosses across Di Maria, puts, puts it in. At that moment, 2 0 up in a World Cup final that usually wins, you have won it. Now, the statistic what, who was the last team that lost after 2 0 final? 1954, Hungary, to if I'm not completely mistaken. So that was uh, some, some, something like that. Just jot it out there towards my wife. It was just like, you're weird. <laughs> you're hopeless. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Didier Deschamps reacted before the half and he yanked Dembélé and he yanked Giroud. Giroud only action was from a free kick from France, which, which would have been so French that they get they got a really good free kick, free kick on, on side. But Giroud, uh, it wasn't given a foul, but he, he would have had, had it above. But this was the one thing where you need him kind of towering. But I thought that Dembélé was really... Um, um, how to say, frustrating. He couldn't get any foot on and I actually think he should have probably taken out Theo as well and this hurts as a Milan fan. Though. Not sure if taking out Giroud was necessarily uh, super needed because maybe a presence like that could have helped. On the other side, bringing on uh, Marcus Thuram and Colomioni, a lot of speed there. And it was also a first sign that we might have witnessed now the transition from the 2018 World Cup winning squad to a potential 2026 World Cup winning squad or for the great future ahead. 
happened right there in the final. Because what came, uh, well, what, what came second half? Second half more of the same, even Argentina more threatening to get a, another goal. Frost didn't have a shot on goal at all. Uh, maybe what seems like the tackling mistake of the tournament is that Acuna came off with Di Maria. And suddenly Frost got a little bit more in the game and uh, Frost already had them. It was more or less a 4-2-4. I mean, with two men down, bringing Turam and um, Colomini uh, up, all tackles were out of the play. Then Theo comes off, uh, Griezmann come off. Uh, again, two rather big players and Griezmann could not get any grip on that game. But still, there wasn't much happening. But uh, on the German tier, the television where I, shout, uh, where, I uh, shout, where I watched, they were saying... Um, France is getting the game a little bit more under control. They're pressing more without creating chances. And I think it took until the seven, uh, late 70th uh, that Mbappé got the first shot off and it went over the bar. And then came the penalty. For once, Colomani is through. Otamendi pulls him down. How this was not at least a yellow card, I actually think he probably, probably even a red card is a little bit beyond me. Because uh, you just cannot yank someone down who is through running on goal, honestly. Mbappé steps up, makes it 2-1, and the game is on. And I was the whole time thinking, I thought, yeah, against Croatia it did not happen. But Argentina, in every game in Nogada, had a two-goal lead. And as soon as the goal was scored, they completely messed it up. And I thought, yeah, this could happen against France as well. This was my entire hope for the second half. They were still very comfortable around Argentina, but usually around the 70th minute, the comfort ends, or the 80th minute, it's exactly there. And then Messi loses the ball uh, to Coman, and then uh, through Mbappé, Thuram, a wonderful 1-2 one Mbappé. Within, well, I think, 90 seconds, the World Cup final is level and another wonderful goal. So we had two brilliant goals in there. And the momentum was squarely for France at this moment. Uh, Mbappé had another shot that went over the bar. I really thought that now uh, Argentina, if they want to win that one, they need to go to go and go on the break. Because everything pointed towards France at that point. And I actually thought they should have uh, attacked even more relentlessly than they did. Because you had really Argentina on the ropes. There was not... The, I've barely ever seen a team as much in the need for getting a breather. Not only did they have a dream shattered within two minutes, you are just barely holding on. And I was a little bit frustrated with the referee because there were two situations where um, he could have played uh, the advantage, but he, he whistled an attack for France dead. And this has been also a theme, and I don't want to make it all about the referees, and I don't want to uh, lessen the Argentinian victory. But the refereeing has been been rather favorable for Argentina's tournament. I already saw it against the Dutch, I saw it a little bit in this final as well. It was not the big calls. They, 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 those, Marginia did largely the right things there, but it's those little calls that actually really can kill your momentum. That's at least the feeling that I uh, had there. Uh, he got it right, the Turam, yes, he clearly wanted to have the pen penalty, this was not a penalty, although I, I was yelling. I think an Argentinian player should have walked. I mean, uh, was was in the, in, the, in the second half or in uh, lay uh, or in overtime where Paredes just brutally goes in. I mean, it's either Otamendi or, 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 or Paredes. Argentina should have finished the game with ten men. I'm sorry to say that. However, I don't want to take away from the greatness of, of this game because it was an in stoppage time already that Messi had the last chance. It was a good save and he probably should have made it safe, but at this moment you knew it's the two superstars who are taking that game by the scruff of their necks. And this overtime, once it ended, uh, once the reg regulation ended, it really settled Argentina a little bit, the coach needed to go, and I also think it settled a little bit uh, too much the French, who then were kind of, yeah, mm -hmm, let's... Maybe we are not so going forward anymore. My wife asked me then, uh, if it is goes to Pepe, who is who is advantage? And I just I thought about it for a second. I said, it's clearly Arch Argentina advantage because a better goalkeeper and I that and I don't trust many of the French players to take the penalties. So I actually think that France better win this. However, it was then uh, Argentina who looked better in overtime. 
Um, I see Paredes came again, came, came on over time, so I think towards the end of the overtime, I think Paredes should, should, should have walked. Uh, Argentina made only one substitution in re, 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 relation, but they came down a whole lot, and I think especially Paredes and Lautaro Martinez come, come, coming on actually helped Argentina. Lautaro Martinez had a horrid game, a horrid tournament in terms of finishing, but he actually provided some uh, added grit there. He had a pretty big chance in the first half of overtime, which kind of seemed again a little bit prelude to madness. Uh, where I think it was Upa Meccano who made a, a wonderful uh, save there. Then he was also um, with, with, with a shot that Duris deflected that falls to Messi and Messi makes it 3-2 and at that moment everyone thought it is decided. Although there was an offside call there, the ball, uh, first you didn't know if, if it was over the line or the referee quickly said it's over the line but we needed to see the semi-automated offside but just the backside whoever it was, um, was just a little bit, I mean, if the guy would have started to say, uh, Lauter would have been in offside position. So, um, it, while everyone thought this was the winning goal, it seemed a little bit an anticlimactic goal. And I, 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 I told to my family, I don't think this is it. This is not it. And we had then the craziest finish. I mean, at that moment, all tactics went out. Also, Rabio came off, Varan came, he came off, he was limping, um, and I thought all the old guard had been taken off of Ralph. All the young players are on now. This is a completely different team than of what they started the World Cup with. And then Montiel handles the ball in the box. And Mbappé steps up and converts uh, a second penalty, and it's a hat trick. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, and it did not end there. Colomuni, who twice could not get on an Emperor Big Cross uh, early in the game, I think it was um, in reg regulation once, then I think um, also after the penalty, he just could not get there. If he's just a little bit taller, or he jumps a little bit sooner, he could have been the big hero and won it twice for France. And then he has the mega chance that uh, the save of the tournament was from a goalie was uh, produced by Amy Martinez. And then right from that on, on, the, on, 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 on the other side, uh, Lautaro again misses a header that just you need to bring. It was harder to not get it on goal uh, than to get it on goal. So a little bit skilled there, I guess, as well. Breathless, absolutely breathless overtime. This, it, this is why we don't want to have golden goal. And even at that point, you know, when it was 3-3, I also said, there's more, more to happen. And it did happen, but no goal were scored. And I was then lamenting. I Don't get me wrong, I love penalty shootouts. I really do. I think there's, uh, this is not the lottery that everyone makes out. There's a whole lot of thought put into it. There's uh, so many uh, psychological battles in there. However, this was a game that was so anticlimactic that it's decided on penalties. This is a game they should have played that one out. I don't know how you make it, uh, make a vote in the stadium. Who wants this game to continue? Who wants to see penalties? The one thing, though, I have to say, penalties suited Argentina quite well. And despite them losing the coin toss in the sense that they were going second, they were playing to the same end as they already went against the Netherlands. The two stars step up, both um, Mbappé and Messi convert. The Messi Mbappé for the third penalty in the same corner. The Messi penalty, I mean, the way he rolled it, I mean, Lloris, who went already in the wrong corner, almost got, 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 got again, and then uh, I saw after that penalty, you kind of had this feeling that every one of the Argentinian team knew that Messi had converted. Let's convert. And Messi was kind of the, the grandfather of the entire squad and said, you, you, you can do it. And once the Messi, Messi converted the penalty, I really felt that when I saw Emiliano Martinez and uh, Kingsley Coman, I felt already run up. This is not, not, not going to end well, and it did not end well. He saved that one. Then Dybala, great penalty taker. We don't need And he came only on for that, converted. And then Emi Martinez, of course, makes some, you know, getting ball and not, uh, gets a yellow card for all that. Like, ticks off Germany, and that was the penalty shootout. We did not really see a great penalty shootout. That's I, that, that is why also it felt a little bit. Then Paredes can't convert, Colomiani must convert. He finally gets a shot in, and then Montiel 
Commerce of file penalty and in a way I found it really cool that it was Montiel who converted that penalty, that he was the big star and not one of the big hitters. It was also a little bit of what this Argentina squad re represents. But what was even more is that in the celebrations afterwards, I mean, the center circle did not run towards Montiel, who probably was with Emi Martinez, but he was alone and it seems like everyone is just collapsing right there. This was so unusual. Everyone was just standing there collapsing. There was everyone, yeah, we, they went for Messi, of course, but everyone was collapsing around there. There was not this, uh, yeah, you know, when Grosso converted for Italy, he's running and all the players after him. Montiel was standing there alone, taking a shirt in front of the fans. Messi in the center circle. Uh, it was kind of so weird. Uh, loads of tears, loads of tears, of course, except for Messi, who uh, I think there was just relief there. The French players see me absolutely disappointed. Of course, I mean, it, it's a gut wrenching loss. It's absolutely a gut wrenching loss. And I can totally understand that one is disappointed after such thing. I also think that it took them way too long to finally get the ceremony going. I mean, how Messi and also the other thing, Messi was looking for his family uh, who took forever to come down. Absolutely. But the ceremony is just too dragged out. We don't need to give out individual trophies. I just want give out the main trophy, then afterwards announce who won, blah, blah, blah. We knew that uh, Mbappé scored eight goals to win the uh, title of the best goal scorer. It was then clear that after this final and after the knockout route that's best yet, he will be the best player. Okay, young player was maybe a little bit, but you know, you of course you give it to a player who is there. It was and the same thing, Emmy Martinez, who humped and called <laughs> Golden Glove, which was another thing that I found rather odd. And then calling every Argentina player out personally. I understand this when me, I didn't like it when Milan won the championship that, you know, everyone, but this is after a long season. This is just a World Cup. Get it over with. Let them celebrate. And then don't put the, I understand it's probably a, a Qatari custom. Uh, fine. But does Messi need the robe over? Okay, of course, Eltani was uh, wearing, uh, the, the Emir was wearing the same robe. So I guess it was kind of an honor. Uh, and I don't want to judge it too much. I think many people go too crazy, but it was a little bit weird. Uh, let's put it that way. Uh, and uh, also, I just before this video, I rewatched the trophy ceremony. Uh, Infantino cannot stop talking to Messi, who just wants to go with the cup to his player. I just hate this uh, thing, and it actually dragged out because this exactly this almost an hour that until the cup was lifted. I would have liked to hear some commentary either on the TV stool, studio, although I don't think I need Bastian Schweinsteiger to tell to tell me, but at least there were others uh, there. So yeah, it was kind of, uh, it left me then a little bit empty almost because I didn't process what was happening. I didn't process what was happening, but um, I quickly came, 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 came to the realization. This was the greatest World Cup final that had only, I can only find two arguments against, two arguments against it. The first one is too many penalties. But you know, high pressure penalties are also very exciting. Uh, and the second one was no lead changes. I think it would have been better if each team had the lead at one point. However, uh, we had many momentum changes. So those are the only two things that go against this final. But in terms of the drama that it dished up, there is no parallel. And then with the two stories, you had history on both sides. We had the crowning moment for Messi. Uh, the, I leave the GOAT debate now on the side. I will probably make a separate video on that. Uh, but what a final that was. Another six goal final and uh, unbefreaking livable. I, and I still have a hard time processing my emotions. I'm on one side really, really happy that Argentina finally won it. As a European, it sucks a little bit, uh, you know, but you know, Ar Argentina for, for, for me in some ways is a more European team than many European teams are at this moment. So um, there you go. But I also feel for the French because I think so many things in this tournament went against them. The injuries to their star players at the beginning of this tour tournament and even going on into it. 
they basically played with a uh, spruced up B squad. Uh, they show the solidity. They have so much talent at their disposal, but then the virus hits them kind of, and then they look so disheveled. I think this Frost team, I, there is more to it. This is a little bit like the 98 Brazil team where we need to know what actually happened because this Frost team didn't look right for most of the time. That they find themselves back and that uh, it's Kylian Mbappé who then takes it on. Who played horribly for the <laughs> largest title of the final, but then he he's more or less the star man of the final, except that he doesn't lift the trophy. It's unbelievable. It's unbe freaking livable. Um, I think for all France fans, I actually would almost say put a hundred euros or whatever that they win the next World Cup. I really think they're that good. I think this final. I, I also have to give the the stones of Deschamps for making those changes and going young and going fresh that pointed the future for I think this is this is a watershed moment this is also a final that kind of marks the end of an era it's similar to the 2006 final and almost like the 1990 uh, final the 1990 final is kind of this the end of the era of this great 80 stars together with Maradona we had the crowning not Lord Mateus kind of he played on but it kind of felt like an end of era 2006 for me felt like the end of the next era that that, that came with this young with the uh, the Zinedine Zidane this was kind of the big superstars there it was the last one before the Messi Ronaldo era, so this kind of book ended it there. It was the start of uh, no, no, not the end. It, it was the yeah, it was the end of the era before the Messi Ronaldo era. And then now we have this one: the Messi Ronaldo era ends. But I really think that this will be an era dominated by this French team, by probably an England team that really is ripe for a title. And by a Spanish team that probably needs a little bit less adventurous coaching. That's where I think we are at this moment. Um, so yeah, loads of thoughts on the World Cup. Loads of thoughts on this World Cup that uh, just... I will do another review video of this World Cup. A little bit more statistically, a little bit less on what was happening in the games and so on. You know, uh, taking a breather. I definitely want to do a montage as well, but I have to see how I will get that. Um, going forward, I think after I'm done with this World Cup carb coverage, I'm going to definitely take a Christmas break. Uh, I'm not ready for the club season yet. I know the Premier League is kick kicking off soon and around New Year's, but don't expect any video like that. I want to actually wrap up the year now, unless something really dramatic happens. But even then, I, for that I have the one minute videos, to be honest. Argentina World Champions. Messi has his crowning achievement of his career and France showed that there is more to give. That's how I want to end it. Any case, please let, let me know your thoughts on this final. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you see more videos like this and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.